basketball fans welcome back so this past weekend we had our kenya morans play in the fiba for basket 2025 qualifiers the games were just insane and some of the things that i said came to pass i knew for a fact that the tunisia matchup was actually quite difficult and we got beat brutally then the next brutal beat down was against angola which my god it was um it was the hardest game to watch but finishing up on a high note is that game against guinea which we won in one by six points and i must say at some point i felt like that game we were almost uh losing it we we're almost bottling it because we are not accustomed to playing with a lead but the good thing is the kenya Marans were able to withstand that they withstood that run and finished off the game and we ran out the we ran it out with a record of one and two so one win two losses and guinea just to add some context this is a team that was coming off their own loss two back-to-back -back losses against angola which they they played in, the, in fr on friday they played on saturday against tunisia so they were just hours removed from our game so even in the post game interview one of the guinea players came out and said that they didn't even have enough rest and playing back to back really wrecked them but it is what it is that's how this format of the context is and in this video the whole objective will just be just to give a recap on what really happened and also just give the lessons learned and also the way forward as we continue with our, our continental basketball expeditions with the national team so for starters during these this weekend you could see on the channel if you're watching this on instagram or youtube you have seen a series of videos that i made uh, talking about these games in depth in those videos they just went directly into the star sheet and also just add some context and also looking at the game from a film perspective and from a stats perspective and also giving analysis based on what we saw so i went in depth into those videos and actually those videos were long and i must say they were actually quite difficult to make piecing everything together but in this one i'll just go over what we saw so in the beginning even when i mentioned the kenya morans you could see the whole objective for even the exhibition games that they had was just to like see if they can test out the good you know they, they can test out their training we had some, you know, few issues when well, that was being uh, seen in the training camp, and also when it came to the players and the coaches, I just feel like uh, there was a bit of dysfunction there. And even the first game that we play, even doing a recap, I made, I know I made a couple of videos talking about this, but there's that South Sudanese local based players. We had the game against the team select and the university select team. So. In those uh, three exhibition games prior to this tournament, I can honestly say uh, we had so many flaws that we got masked with the end result. And conceding north of like uh, 200 points in three games, that is that showed me like we had a lot of red flags into going into this tournament. And though that preparation, I don't feel like it was adequate enough to be able to take us to that next level, especially when it came to matching up with these teams. And honestly, if you think that beating those three teams would have made us be iron sharp and iron clad to be able to compete against Tunisia, Angola and Guinea, then you're just wrong and, and you're mistaken. Because those games, honestly, if you ask me, they were just more of PR and they are mostly just to put the team out there and just show the Kenyans that we can win games. But in the end, uh, we all know the truth. And... With that, there was also that whole issue with the coach, the coaching situation. You could see KBF and the Kenya Marans management made a made made, uh, made it impossible for Coach Grant Wallace to coach, and also KBF management and also the Kenya Marans management gave the nod to Coach Cliff, knowing how much of a failure he is, and kept this giving this guy a chance to coach the team, knowing for a fact that this is a coach that cannot bring to you anything substantial. This is a man that got cut in the FIBA for basket qualifiers and Coach Liz Mills got brought in. Then, after things went side with his coach, coach Liz Mills, he got brought back in. And when he got brought back in for the FIBA, Afro, not even FIBA for basket, but FIBA World Cup qualifiers, he made, he, I don't even say made sure, but we lost the games under him and his strategies and tactics were ineffective. 
So this was not a coach that you could trust. But yet again, he got even he, he got a chance to coach in the FIBA African 2023, where he's really, really struggled, and we couldn't do anything. We couldn't do anything to even make it back to the finals, and we had the huge drop from being uh, runners up in 2019 to finishing sixth. So we could see there was a huge drop off in that, and there was still no red flags raised on this coach, and he was still given an opportunity. And also another red flag was when the the team was playing a week before uh, traveling to Tunisia against the University Select. The man was not even there to coach the team. The man was busy coaching the KPA Dockers. So that was something that rubbed me off the wrong way and even made a video talking about it. I said in my video, the Kenya Morans are lost. That, that, that one was addressing that whole situation. And going even into this, you could see the comments that the players had. They covered it on Instagram, put it on also X, just talking about what these players were saying. I feel like they didn't have a very good camp. And given the fact that so, two players, Joel Ewich and Derek Ogechi, they flew in from uh, they flew in from their countries and their leagues that they play in, and they flew directly to the venue. So they met in the venue. They met in Tunisia for, with the with the other ten players that flew in from Nairobi to Tunisia. So there was lack of chemistry there, and that's the same problem that we've had even in dating back three years ago in 2021. There's this interview that Joel Ewich had after the Mozambique game. He said. You know, we have our problems with our chemistry. And still, that problem keeps, keeps it's, it's a recurrent issue. Now, now that this window has come to a close, we have, now have 12 months to prepare for the next one, which is going to be next year time like this. Will we keep dropping the same excuses? Will we keep, you know, Coach Cliff? Will we keep the legacy players as we know it? Because... Even moving, even moving forward, are the legacy players, even the people who are defending them, do you actually think they, do you actually believe that they can deliver us any, any, anything for us? Can they do anything for us? I don't think so. They have the legacy players have shown time and time and time again they cannot be relied upon. They are they think that they can get away. They they got they get away with calls in the domestic league in KBF, but when you go down to FIBA, you have people averaging. You know what? You know two points zero points some players can even go scoreless with they don't even the players you think they can drop 30 they drop how many points six points four points two points at some point zero points averaging four points per game on on, on ridiculous minutes and people players can even play north of 27 minutes and have zero productivity these are the players that are being brought in so there has to be even an audit of this thing because Going by the stats, going by the film, and going by the history of the coaches, the legacy players, it's clear that Ari Lokal, Griffin Ligare, Desmond Willy, Joel Ewich, who else? Uh, Victor Bosire, they should all go. Actually, the team captain did not even lead by example. Victor Bosire was actually very inefficient. And it's only those two shots that he hit in that Guinea game that you, you might think that, you know, he's all that, but he's not. He's a player that is very inefficient. In in the game in, in the game in against Angola, this man played two minutes thirty thirty seconds and he fouled three times. So this is not a player that you can actually rely on. He's not a scorer, he's not a point guard, he's a no he's nobody. He doesn't possess any skill there. So there's that. And one thing even before I, I leave the games, the Tunisia and Angola matchups were very crucial because had we won either of these matchups, it would have uh, shown us that we have changed our ways. But anytime Kenya matches up against an elite team, we fail. Angola did not even bring their A team. They had a 17-year-old from NBA, the NBA Academy and he came in and schooled us. We had... Uh, Chile Dandao, he was doing anything he wanted. Jilson Bango was doing everything he wanted. Gerson Lukeni was doing everything he wanted in that Angola game. And we got schooled in there. We were, got very much schooled. Tunisia, we're just getting, uh, we're just getting, uh, uh, we, we, we're just getting scored on, man. Like, we, we're just getting our asses handed out, handed over to us by a 45-year-old Romdan Slimane. Is much more effective than these legacy. He's much more older and much more effective than these legacy players that we have. We have players that can't even grab a rebound. 
Our front court is weak. Desmond Willie, Ariel Ocal are very ineffective. I mean, um, who else? This guy, <laughs> Fidel Fade, man. Oh my God, Fade, he was just. I just feel like some players just need to get out of the team immediately. They can't provide anything for us. They can light. They can show. Not even lie. They can show you that they are very dominant in the domestic league. They can show that they are all stars in the domestic league. But when it comes to playing for the national team, these are guys that just fumble it. So they're they're just you know they're just out there. So Tunisia and Angola are considered way above us, and they are not. We are not even on the same level. But Guinea is on the same level as Kenya. So Tunisia and Angola it was a given that they're gonna beat us, and it, and and it showed. They beat us by double digits, and they beat us by above like twenty points. Uh, Angola being the worst with thirty points, so we produced the one of the weakest matchups against Tunisia and Angola. But in the Guinea game, despite the fact that we won that game, we still struggled to maintain a lead. At some point, Guinea cut the lead to two. And we didn't even know how to play with a lead because we are used to uh, playing when we are down. We are used to losing so much to the point where we don't even know how to win a game. And it was it was just Albertodero's late game heroics that got us the win, especially in the horse. Because you couldn't even get anything, any productivity from the legacy players. Griffin was not there. Bosir is not that guy. He only had like he only hit one three. He only hit one three at the fourth and. That's it. He, he's not. He was not a primary score. He's not even a point guard. I don't even know why he play. He thinks he can play that position. He's not that guy. I mean, uh, I doubt even the efficiency of a Griffin. Griffin is actually a good player. He's a solid player, but his output is wanting. We don't even know what he can bring to a team, especially when it comes to the Kenya Morans. Only veteran leadership, and that's where it stops. But shooting the three ball, he can't. There are some players who can't even shoot the three ball. Griffin being one of them. So. All I'm just saying is, beating Guinea does not make us, you know, any better. We've just won a game, and that and that game will now ease off the pressure when you're going on to the next window. We don't have to struggle as much, because now that means we only have to win about uh, one game, or even like two games if possible. That will mean that we'll have to win against either Angola or Tunisia, or and beat Guinea again, which is our best bet. But honestly, if you ask me. This win against this win against uh, Guinea does not make us, you know, that we are not all that. We only won by six points, and we literally struggled. If we are almost blowing that lead, so people have to understand that um, we have twelve months to prepare. Twelve months to understand. We have to start training immediately for it. The twenty twenty five Afro basket is just twelve months away. We have to prepare. We cannot just wait for last minute the way we waited. Like even putting a team together took time are we going to rebuild are we going to content content if you're going to keep the legacy players that means that you don't want to rebuild and you don't you want to go ahead and contend some players in their roster need to go the team must be centered around Alberto Dero, Eugene Adera, Derek Ogechi, uh, Fahim, Bramwell those are the guys that need to rebuild and also add in players that are young players below the between age age 17 to 21 those are the players that are supposed to be filling the other roster spots all the others need to go all of them because if if you keep you can keep the legacy players you can keep the legacy coach you can keep the legacy team manager but you will never win with those people i'm talking to you kbf because i'm pretty sure you're going to listen to this video soon so when it's uploaded so i know you watch i know you watch my videos so the thing is my message to the national team is cut the legacy players, uh, cut the coach. The coach needs to be fired immediately. Coach Cliff needs to go. He's not a coach that can do anything for us. This win against Guinea does not ex exonerate him. He's still incompetent. He, he got embarrassed by Angola and Tunisia. Okay? I know that Tun Tunisia are defending champions. And they are uh, and they are defending two time they're reigning two time defending champions and Angola have eleven Afro baskets so they are legendary. So the thing is, Coach Cliff needs to go. The team manager Maxine needs to go. This is only a, a lady that is only concerned with trips. So this is somebody that is not concerned with even even what does she do exactly? Does she even take part in the selection committee? 
because if the, if if she did if, if she's in that committee why are we still having some player some deadwood players on the roster so yeah you know your, your guess is as good as mine we need change and we need to rebuild the team because we cannot roll with these players these players have shown that they produce virtually nothing for us they have nothing going for us they only care about you know their own personal fame and, and playing for their national team but they don't care about winning ask yourself do these players feel embarrassed when they embarrass our country do they because if they feel embarrassed they wouldn't be playing this poorly i mean again man it is what it is we have 12 months to prepare the lesson learned is prepare early we don't have to prepare a month to the tournament because if you look at it the next window will open for for kenya the next one is gonna be in november but we'll kenya is not gonna feature there we're gonna have other nations there but in february next year 12 months away we have the new there are the other window opening then much later in august september that's when we're gonna have the actual afro basket so we have ample time to prepare the question is are the kenya Morans management competent enough to understand what they need to do because if, if they keep keep on you know uh, operating like this even even the airfare to go there they should start fundraising for it now they should start uh, creating mechanisms so that they don't go broke and start depending on the government to, to fly them out something like that they should even start selling their own merchandise or something so there are so many excuses that the Kenya runs uh, management coach cliff kbf can have they can drop all they want but the the fact is they can keep these players they can keep this coach they can keep the legacy players and i'm talking about the the, the players on the roster i'm talking about the legacy players in there are players i'm giving a hall pass the players i'm giving a hall pass Derek Ogechi. we're giving a hall pass to alberto dero ariel ortega eugene adera fahim bramwell i know ken washer did not play but also give them a hall pass because those are the players that we need to rebuild around those are the, the bonafide number one option right now is Alberto Dero. He's our guy. The number two option, Derek Ogechi. Number three, uh, Eugene Adera. But number two, it can be switched. It's either who whoever gets hot, either either Eugene or Derek. But you get the point. Though that trio, then you add in Fahim Juma. Then you add in our three point specialist Ariel Oteg. Then you add in our center Bramwell. Then you add in an, another swingman Ken Oshira. I mean we have the pieces the only thing is they need to get rid of Ari local they have to get rid of uh victor bosire griffin ligare you have to get rid of fidel okoth joel ewich i mean they need to go desmond willy needs to go they all need to go for the next level the next generation of the players because you can even see other nations are retooling and they're rebuilding even if i i would rather we lose games with a rebuilding squad other than you take the legacy players we lose with them that means you have gone there to contend and we have lost so it is what it is so those are the things that i just wanted to cover in this video i know i've said a lot this whole weekend even with the videos i made but that one right there i just want i just wanted to add and just say you know there are things that need to happen so if you guys like the video make sure you leave your feedback down in the comments on what you think and um i'm out peace